Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, I do want to call on everyone's attention a couple of things. Uh, one, I want to welcome our new board members. Ms. Muhammad will be here. She in indicated she's running late, but she will be here. So but I do want to welcome Ms. Oakley and Ms. Muhammad to the board. and look forward to their service. I want to call to your attention the posters on the wall. As I indicated at the June meeting, we started a Girls, Inc. Um, program and this was the first exercise that the um, girls were asked to do uh, which was on finances to, to communicate um, with their parents how they interpret the financial advice that their parents give them so it was a communication <laughs> exercise both in terms of the parents communicating with the girls what um, they understood and the girls indicating back what their understanding what the lessons that their parents had communicated to them so um, so this was a part of that exercise so it gives you a great insight into the mind of a young 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 woman to be uh, from a from, from a financial standpoint so I'm going to um, before I go into the formal program um, which is going to begin with a presentation by um, the architectural from a heritage architecture I did want to just take the prerogative to share to note that we are celebrating this summer the 50th anniversary of Freedom Summer 50 years ago, in 1964, um, young people from across the country descended upon the South um, to uh, change the course of history. Um, and also, uh, this is the um, 50th anniversary of the death of three of those civil rights workers, uh, Michael Schroeder, Andrew Goodman, and James Chaney. Mm -hmm. So um, as we do our work tonight, uh, we are informed that uh, we stand on the shoulders of others who make considerable sacrifices 
One of them was local. Um, I believe it was Michael Schwern um, with Helm, Helm, from Helm, exactly right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to begin this evening. I'd like to welcome Ms. Uh, Summer Alamash and Mr. Steven Zamuda from Heritage Architecture. Um, the board will recall that we did put an RFP out for architectural and engineering services. We had two responses. Um, the board is familiar with the other respondent, uh, Loth Arthur Seckler of Loth Enterprises. Um, but I've, uh, so I've had the opportunity to review the proposals, and I'm going to be making a recommendation to the board um, that I be authorized to contract with Heritage Architecture. So um, with that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Ms. Alamash to make a presentation about her firm. Right. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Sandra Anhamash. I'm a principal uh, of Heritage Architecture. We're a uh, women-owned business, and uh, the firm is about 15 years old. And we have a 55 zero. 15. 15. 15. 15. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, four registered architects uh, and uh, staff architects, about 10 people. And we are very experienced working with housing authorities. Our uh, for the last uh, eight years, we've worked with uh, New York City Housing Authority. We worked on multiple uh, projects in the Bronx. Uh, we also worked with uh, in New Jersey with local housing authorities, including New York Housing Authorities. And we are very familiar with the uh, scope of work and the design requirements that are uh, in the RFP. We're also very familiar with the HUD requirements. So we've done a lot of uh, HUD funded projects. We understand the funding criteria and how we work in terms of contracting and bidding projects publicly uh, and uh, that are happening. Um, so we have, uh, I would like to hand in a couple of um, our firm brochures for, for review. And um, I have with me here Steven Zimota, who is the project manager at our firm. Steven is also familiar with doing housing work, and he has worked with me on several projects with New York Housing Authority. Um, so we have looked at the, uh, the scope of work and the properties, and we understand that you are currently seeking roofing replacement, and some boiler upgrades for energy efficiency, and some common area uh, improvements. And those are definitely projects that we are very familiar with. Uh, Stephen can speak of some of the projects that we're currently working on as far as roofing and replacement. Right. Um, the projects that we have uh, right now, they're under construction and under design board are uh, have to do with schools, housing, and municipal buildings, um, which involve all phases from um, not just the roof replacement, but the masonry walls, and some of the structural uh, restoration of buildings. Um, my own experience, I have just about uh, 25 years of experience on roofing, uh, public works, construction, commercial, and residential. So. Uh, so we definitely would uh, be able to give you the full services, including uh, looking at the properties, doing an assessment of the conditions, and you know, discussing this with the housing authority. We would come in with alternative solutions to see which ones would be the most feasible. Uh, you know, also explore cost versus value and uh, long-term longevity of living systems, and we will meet the criteria in the sense that the buildings will not be required to operate for a long time. And then we will give you the zone options with some cost associated with that. Uh, and as far as the common area requirements, we will also look at the, the existing conditions and we will come up with color schemes. Uh, we will probably present those also on, on color boards for you to examine and make a selection. And, and then once schematic design is completed and you have selected a uh, course of action, we'll go to construction documents and prepare the big documents for public bidding. Uh, and then we will work with you in selecting the proper contractor. And then we will do the construction administration. So our firm is very also very um, equipped with doing construction administration. Most of our projects, about 99%, are publicly bid and they go to construction. We administer the full services. So we would either do uh, a limited uh, administration, which would be visits every two weeks, and we administer payments for, con for, for contractors, and we close out the project when it's completed. Or we have done construction management, which is a more extended services. So really depending on how the authority wants to pursue uh, construction administration, we would work with you on getting projects completed and based on the design 
So I might understand that it's Stephen, right? Stephen, yes. The, you brought him with you because he would be the one who'd be doing primarily doing the work here. Yes, Stephen Zamora right. is a he's a registered architect in the state of New York, and uh, he would be the project manager. Of course, with him would be some CAD designers and mm -hmm. staff architects who would support him on the work. I would come in and attend major meetings as well, and milestones, you know, and schematic design meetings to make sure that you know, he's satisfied with his work. How long has he been with your firm? Stephen has been with us for a little less than a year. Uh, but he has worked on several projects. And what projects? Uh, I noticed in, in the brochure there were a lot of projects mm -hmm. that didn't look to me like they were probably with your firm, the way yes. it was phrased, but I'm not sure. So which a ones? A lot of it was um, most recent projects were with uh, banking, um, at West Bank, uh, City Bank. Uh, these that's with this firm? Uh, oh, the right. most recent? Right, but the most recent yeah, is um, projects. Yeah, uh, high school, vocational high school. And the Omni projects. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we're, have doing, uh, uh, we're doing two rehab Newark. projects in order for Omni Development, and Stephen is the product manager there. Uh, it's uh, one is this 132 units, and the other one is a mixed, uh, not the plant units. Yeah. Of course, 14 story buildings. Mm -hmm. And I didn't notice in there, but who were you with before? Um, here? Just prior? Yes. Uh, JP Morgan Chase. I was, uh, you were on staff there? Yes, yeah, directly. And with that, before that, uh, HSBC Bank. All the roof replacements, uh, different bodies, okay. building out branches. So you've been substantially in the bank as an architect for Oh, banks. yeah, that's right, from ground up and uh, the maintenance. And uh, as far as the uh, schools, uh, they're working on the new projects, the masonry restoration projects in the office, uh, designing and uh, full specification writing. Mm -hmm. and, and Stephen has a, an extensive experience being uh, in construction administration. Since he was a field architect most of the time, he would really be key in terms of uh, he's currently doing a couple of projects in construction administration, making sure projects go smoothly and construction. Yeah, we'll be on site with the uh, contractors, with the engineers, uh, building owners, uh, writing reports, meeting minutes, and uh, summaries, and tracking the budget as well. Sounds like you were working as much as an owner's breakfast. Anything else? Uh, for, oh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Stephen, uh, so as I indicated, uh, we did receive two responses. Uh, we, we have used uh, Lothrop in the past. Um, I think that um, Heritage is uniquely situated as far as the actual scope of work that we're doing, which is going to be roofing work <coughs> in Main Street. Um, and that considerable experience. So I um, have not had the opportunity to check the references um, so for that, so I will be doing that and have a chance to do that prior to um, going on vacation, but that's the last bit of due diligence necessary. Um, so if the um, board has no other questions, I'll dismiss them. I do have one question. Yes. Um, I noticed that your, the work you've done for the Newark, the Newark Housing Authority, it's like you have three different projects. Are these three different phases or three different? Uh, they, they seem to overlap in the, um, mm -hmm. the time period. Those are actually uh, three different projects, but those were multiple uh, locations. This particular project is a specific development, which was a rehab for an abandoned development, and it was 56 units. So it's um, completely independent. It was 56 units. Yeah. Those were scattered sites, and they probably included up to 400 units, which we did in a period of about two years. What was the uh, budget, construction budget? The construction budget all these went to up to 15 million. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's a, like I said, it's about, they were variable from uh, fire damage units to abandoned units to mold infested units, mm -hmm. uh, every, every kind of rehab we have imagine we have done. And we've also done the senior housing. We have done a lot of lobbies. We've done the full lobbies there, uh, management offices. We modernized the management offices. And we did residential real estate as well. So these are the rehab projects. This is new construction? No, uh, this, new construction? this is all rehab. All, all yeah. three of them? Even this one, it was turned almost to new construction. But it was a rehab. We had to cut the units because they were abandoned. And these are some of the new construction. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So the RFP was just that. It was a request for proposals for qualifications. Um, if the board will authorize me to start negotiations with Heritage over their fee, um, I'd like to um, have the authorization to, um, to negotiate their fee. Were there no fees included in the... No, it was, it was simply a request for qualifications. All right, that's, that's typically, um, because it's not price sensitive, Special services are not price sensitive. Uh, we're requiring a um, price specific bid, so it was just a call for um, And is there a reason that, and I'm not sure if this uh, is the right question from here, but I'm going to put it out there. Is there a reason that you've chosen to move to an unknown quantity of meal? No, it's, no, it's a fair, fair question. Um, the last time that the housing authority used uh, the other architectural firm, we felt they were a little oversubscribed and didn't give us quite the attention that we felt we should. Um, also, though it's not necessarily there, it cannot be necessarily laid fully at their feet, we did um, have a protracted um, legal wrangling with the contractor, um, which we ultimately were able to settle. Um, but. It did, in, in part, stem from uh, the, the work of the last firm. So for those two reasons, I want to take a fresh look. However, based on that experience, is there something that could be written in the contract so that we, if we're feeling we're not getting uh, due diligence from the architect, that we've got a way to hold your feet to the fire? Uh, yes, we certainly could add provisions like that in the contract. Subject to their approval. Uh, we have to see. We have to take a look, really. I mean, I think, keep in mind, this projects are very small. So, you know, the fee proportionally would be very small as well. So, we have to take a look at the language. And the issue is with building subcontractors, and maybe uh, that's the approach we should be taking just to make sure who's responsible and how those relationships work. It was um, an issue with um, a, a subcontract with the general contract. We are, we are very experienced with putting together the documents uh, uh, as far as you know, uh, taking your lawyer place, which I looked at it as well, incorporating that into ours. Of course, the legal, legal language comes from the authority, however, you want to work the legal language as far as they. But we're very good about incorporating that into our bidding documents. And the HUD accepted format is the AIA contract document. Um, so there may be language in there already with regard to timetables, um, uh, responsiveness. Of course, we have very good at protecting the architects. <laughs> 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 Not just that, I mean, no architectural firm is going to uh, guarantee the performance of a contract or a sub course mm -hmm. I mean, They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. The, the issue in that case actually wasn't the it was the, should we say, uh, reluctance of the architect to follow up with the performance of the contractor uh, and take prompt action. The monitoring. The yeah, uh, monitoring yeah. was, it became a big issue. Mm -hmm. That's fully with the architecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, after it's um, the pleasure of the board, I have. Uh, my recommendation is that we do um, enter into a contract with um, Heritage um, contingent upon um, arriving at AC um, that's acceptable to um, HUD does establish safe harbor numbers as well as a maximum amount percentage of the overall construction budget so I don't expect it to be a very complicated process. Um, the total construction budget is about a half million dollars which is not a uh, very large um, so I don't think that, that would be a very protracted process given the size of the, the jobs that the firm has worked on in the past and is currently working. Subject to your aforementioned final due diligence. Subject to yes. the final due diligence check and references on that correct. I make a motion that we authorize the executive director to negotiate uh, a contract with Heritage. Heritage Architects. No, yes. Is that no, right? Heritage Architects? Architecture. Architecture. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I'm presuming
presuming that will come back to us uh, at our next meeting for That's a correct. final. That's correct. That's correct. The, 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 sorry, the, at the um, August board meeting, I'll be asking um, for a resolution for an end to this specific amount of time. Let me ask something else. Um, how extensive is the regrouping in this instance? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, the roofing systems at um, both 345 and 361 have failed, um, but at the same time, until we make a final determination as to what direction we're going in with Bracey, um, we are going to just do the minimum amount necessary. So I've, as I've discussed um, with the architectural team, we would not be doing extensive roofing that would result in, say, a 25-year warranty at this point in time, but really basic, just to, to secure the, uh, the envelope. Um, have you reviewed the property at all? We have looked at the area of that, but we have not visited the site yet, so okay. that's good to do that. Are we expecting uh, any extensive pointing in the parapets or anything like that? It, it does need pointing. The masonry certainly does need parapets. Point and whether or not the budget will allow for that at this point in time is for what say. We should be doing both groups, but we really just have the funding for one at this point in time. So we may, perhaps we can do a field survey of the pointing. We could definitely do that. The schematic is on right. for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we would say this is our recommendation to do all this work, and then you would choose to phase it to give you some flexibility. Right. I just want to make sure Angela has the language about the details. So moved. A second. A second. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be following up with you after I've had a chance to check it out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda um, will prompt an apology from me that um, I just received, um, had the opportunity today to discuss the budget with um, Housing Authority staff. So I haven't had the opportunity to review it in detail, um, which I will do, and then I will just distribute it. And I just, I, my recommendation is that at the time that uh, the budget is distributed, that we have a full discussion on the record about the budget and uh, we'll be able to distribute copies of the budget at once when it's made available to the board. Anything for August? Yes, absolutely. Yes, most well, certainly will be. And my apologies for not having it done. It was uh, something that I had wanted to get done before going on vacation, um, but just have had the opportunity to finally review some of the numbers with the, um, with the staff today. Uh, the next item is I do want to, um, in your board package, you'll see that we have applied for a grant um, to HUD for uh, safety and security. Um, it's a um, very competitive grant. Um, uh, so I do think that we have an opportunity. So you see the line items uh, from the budget for the grant that's provided. Um, I see that we didn't number the pages of the uh, packet this time around. Um, so mm -hmm. I think so we'll just have to take a moment to fish for it and find it. But it uh, Page three. So page three of the application shows you the line items that we've applied to help for funding for. As you may be aware, the city of New Rochelle is in the process of installing uh, security cameras throughout uh, the city. Um, I think they uh, have a plan for about 10 locations throughout the city. Um, they have been installed, for example, at the intersection of North and Main. Um, that's probably the most conspicuous one. Um, and uh, we would want it to be tying our system into theirs uh, so that um, our, our beat officer or any responding police officer would be able to pull the cameras up from their location, from their, from their patrol car, and also um, securing uh, the front entrance doors of the buildings. Uh, so um, we've gotten good support from the residents. So a number of the, the resident organizations submitted uh, letters of support uh, for the application. And we'll be reaching out to our congressional representatives in the hope that we'll be funded for that. So if we get funded for that, that funds putting them in? If, if, it funds the acquisition and the installation. Okay. okay what about maintenance? Uh, maintenance, I do, I do not know whether or not the 
grant would allow for a budget item for maintenance, or if we would have to undertake that item? I'd like to know what we can anticipate for a cost for maintenance, mm -hmm. um, as well as not only the physical maintenance, but somebody's going to have to um, somehow catalog and store these recordings. And yeah, I, I just, I'd, I'd like to know that we've really thought it out. Sure. So how many cameras do we have in this full process? Yeah, all the same. Mm -hmm. Good ballpark. Uh, so we currently have about 30 security cameras throughout installed throughout the portfolio. Um, and, I can, and based on the, the cost of that contract, I can tell you what the service contract is. So okay. they would probably be a function of that. Who's currently maintained? Are they going to tape or DVD department? They go to DVR. Okay. Mm -hmm. To DVR? To DVR. So they get overwritten how frequently? Mm -hmm. Based on the amount of activity, because um, they go into silent mode when there's no activity, but roughly 20 days. Expectation, Ira, legally, that we would have to maintain them longer than that? I don't believe so. It's done with our convenience. Unless the city has some sort of special rule to, to tie into them, they may have their own rule of maintenance. But other than that, I don't know where Yeah, typically, when they have been very effective in aiding um, in solving crimes, and typically the request from the police department or the district attorney typically comes in within three to five days of the incident. It's, I, I can't think of a situation in which a request for footage has been made beyond the 20 minutes. But I can get you based on what the service contract is for the existing camera. We just want to make sure we can afford it. Yeah, understood. That's a great question. Great question. Uh, let's see. I do want to let the board know that um, the HUD did disapprove our 2014 agency plan. I'd like to direct your attention to that language because it will require a decision on the housing authority. And again, it's, um, it's dated uh, June 25th, so it's in your packet. I'll give everybody a moment to find that, and I'll put your attention to some of the language. So it's dated uh, June 25, 2014, and it, the subject heading is the 2014 PHA plan disapproval letter. So, uh, basically, um, in our agency plan that was submitted to HUD, uh, we show using the 2015 CFP monies for demolition. Um, and um, HUD is taking the position that that was not on the original demolition plan for Hartley, that for Hartley we showed using the 2013 and 2014 CFP monies for demolition. Um, okay, that's in it, but the board may know that uh, HUD did not approve us using the monies for demolition this time, uh, so uh, we put it into the 2015. So the remedy is from a is the remedy from a clerical standpoint is relatively straightforward. At the bottom of the letter, they recommend that we either remove the demolition cost from the year from year two and resubmit the plan, or we obtain approval from the Special Application Center to include that in our 2015 CFP. So um, we have to make a decision. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to the HUD field office because if they are not inclined to allow us to use the CFP money for demolition because they feel that we should be using it at the other developments, then there would not be any point in me submitting a request to SAC for the change. So we will be um, making a decision on We had asked HUD to approve the plan so that we could at least begin spending um, the non-demolition related funds um, and to give us an opportunity to decide which way to go to a different decision. Um, we do want to go over the 2012 agency plan revision. I believe that that follows in the board packet. It's really basically, um, so you'll see very small changes um, in the actual amount, and that's uh, dated June 17th, um, and the subject is the fiscal year 2012 capital fund program budget revision. And you'll see um, just very slight revisions, both in fees and costs, and in relocation. Um, relocation is significant because there was a change in the HUD rules uh, midstream of the Heritage Homes project where they now do not 
allow for capital fund monies to be used for relocation costs if the units being constructed are not public housing units. So as you know, Heritage is not public housing. Um, and we were permitted to use the relocation costs initially, um, but right toward the tail end, fortunately came at the tail end of our relocation, um, we uh, were not approved for further expenditures. So that's why you see that we budgeted more than we actually spent for relocation. Finally, um, I do want to report on the construction trades information session that was held last Thursday at City Hall as part of the Heritage Homes development. Uh, the Housing Authority and the City of Marichelle came under some criticism for not adhering to the spirit and the letter of certain um, local community hiring legislation that the city had included. So um, at this time, they wanted to make sure they did a more active role. Um, I understand um, that about uh, 25 people were in attendance, um, that um, according to the city manager and the council person for the district, uh, they were pleased with the participation and with the opportunities that are being offered by the developer uh, to local minority businesses. So that went very well. And unless there are any questions on any of the things on my report, um, I'll conclude my report at that point in time. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Thank you. Move on to item three discussion items. Um, well, there may be some issues that board members want to raise, but I do want to just call your attention to some of the items that are in your board packet, um, specifically a newsletter from Father from the conference. Um, we do want to call to your attention that the city of New Rochelle does publish a list of um, sex offenders in the city, um, and we did discover uh, that one of the sex offenders is using an address um, of ours um, that would be on the second page of that report. So we have scheduled that council for a hearing um, for the end of this month. Um, the person is not on the lease, so it's not clear whether or not they just gave that address or they're actually residing there, um, but we will be having a hearing to determine that. Do you want to call to your... Not that I'm in favor of it, but um, is there anything in our policies or HUD policies that would restrict uh, sex offender from living on our properties? Well, if they have a prior criminal conviction. That's right. Uh, living is the only as close to being on the lease. So, so either. Either. Yeah. either. Yeah. Well, is on the lease would be a prior criminal That's conviction. Right. As far as living there, they have to, every person, every adult okay. has to be registered. If they're not, so any criminal conviction will uh, disqualify them. Certainly, drugs not is all. automatic, but felony Felons. convictions give the housing authority discretion to disqualify for eligibility. Um, one well, also want to call to your attention um, a just a, a solicitation for a. Um, legal service and they raised the issue of medical marijuana and whether or not uh, property owners are responsible or required to lease to individuals um, who have um, permission to use marijuana for medical purposes and the answer is that we do have the discretion even though a person may um, be permitted um, to use marijuana for medical purposes and you know that the governor just recently signed legislation to that fact um, it is not a violation of um, their human rights or their civil rights to deny that um, application if we, uh, so we would have to, so we will have to be making a um, decision on that and we will have to revise our admissions and continued occupancy policy accordingly. So it's not advisable that we remain silent, that the policy is currently silent. Um, did not anticipate that at the time that the policy was drafted, um, but uh, based on the board's position, we will have to reflect it in our policy. So again, <clears throat> if somebody's in residence and um, has a reason and gets a prescription for medical marijuana, it's at our discretion whether they remain in the property or at that point we have to allow them to remain in the property. Yeah, I understand your question. I don't know that I can answer it at this point because one of the things I don't know is how it factors into the 
position that the board took on smoking on the premises. Mm -hmm. As a member of the board, adopted a policy, a smoke-free policy, as it relates to the external properties. We did not. Mm -hmm. The policy doesn't address the issue of um, smoking in units and dwelling units. So I don't know if the two would have to be in alignment or not, mm -hmm. and whether that would be um, how that would if we would be grandfathering anybody in, or if it would relate to new. New occupants. I don't know the answer. When do you think we might get enough information that we can call over this for a full discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, I have to have a discussion with you. This was, I said, I had not, frankly, I had not thought about the issue, and this was, I think, just some uh, company that is taking advantage of recent developments to offer their advice and services. Um, so that's what I just, uh, that's what sure. prompted me. Well, I will look into it and report back. Okay, great, okay, thanks. Um, that completes my discussion. Thank you. I have two. Um, I wanted to put forth the discussion a proposal to formally amend our bylaws to change our meeting time from 5 p.m. to 5.30. Uh, I believe it would really bring us into uh, conformance with our current uh, schedule and allow for uh, better compliance with open meeting law. Uh, my understanding is that we need to formally uh, notice this. That's correct. Um, but I want to put it out for discussion first and see if uh, we are agreeing. If you don't mind, I think that's overly restrictive on the bylaws and that it should be that the, uh, the meeting time should be at the discretion of the chairperson uh, with proper notification to the public, of course. I don't think it needs to be that restrictive within the bylaws, though. Which element uh, are you saying? The, the time. The time. I think time and, and date with proper notification to the public should be at the discretion of the chair, which of course the chair will, re will reach out to um, everybody. And of course, we've been meeting on the second Monday of the month for many years. I don't think that's going to change much, but um, I think flexibility is a positive. I thought there was a way, you know, we could add language that establishes the day of the month, you know, the, the uh, second Monday and the time uh, pending any changes that might be necessitated by, you know, sometimes we run into a holiday, um, you know, other issues that could, that, that could be left to the discretion. Um, you know, we haven't revised our Bible since. 1994, 1996. Maybe mm -hmm. we should just take a good look at them and do a comprehensive revision. Uh, one doesn't preclude the other. Uh, this is just something that I thought we could do in the near term. Uh, as we I think the slide survey ID is a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's personal thing. Well, I understand what Rick is saying. We don't want to restrict us, but I think we do need to revisit the Bibles and look at them since. A considerable amount of time has passed, and we need to be familiar with and look to see whether or not there are other provisions that we might need to visit as well. Do you represent the other one, not the Bronco Boys? Yeah, and it, either way is an acceptable way. Other housing authorities have adopted rules that uh, give flexibility to the chairperson to uh, schedule the, uh, the time uh, upon sufficient notice to the commissioners. Uh, and yet others uh, will specifically give the time. Um, I suppose a specific time gives consistency. Uh, on the other hand, it makes it rather inflexible to account for differences in schedules and so forth. And I'm not suggesting we shouldn't put consistency, just whether it really belongs to the Bible is my question. Well, I mean, you, you, you raised two issues. You know, one, the Bible is we need to look at it. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just think generally the 5.30 is a good idea based on the time most mm -hmm. people get here. You know, oh, just no disagree. Sense. Just makes sense to me. Yeah, no disagree. Okay. The only question is whether, in my mind, whether it really belongs in, in the bylaws okay, right. as opposed to Perfect. being in practice. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's the preference of the majority that we leave it to a more global view of the bylaws in the coming weeks and months. I think I'm going to put to a vote. I just want to get a general sense. Just something that I think you're alluding to uh, is that 
maybe we should act on that provision of the bylaws relatively quickly because it would uh, it, it would make it easier for the public. Yes, I agree. That's why I put it forth tonight. Again, the noticing requirement. You know, we'll ask for some time. We can get this in place for our August meeting. Okay. That was my intention, but again, I don't know, I'd like to speak for the entire board, but at least most of it. I think it's a good idea. To, spec yeah. to specify or to leave it at the board? No, to, to change the um, time we meet and then, you know, work, worry about the other bylaws later on. We need to commit to a, a thorough review of our bylaws. Um, but this is something that we can, my understanding is we can take action on this separately. Certainly, we can amend the bylaws as you wish. I think uh, one of the things we have to do is, is the whole flexibility issue. Um, you know, I'm always clobbering on, only because um, when we have a really packed agenda, where we know it's going to be a lengthy, you know, time for us to meet, perhaps we might want to look at five, meeting at five o'clock, if, especially if discretion is left to the, the chairperson. And then if we know it's going to be short agenda, then perhaps we can even, you know, look at five thirty. That may be one way to deal with, just so we don't lock ourselves in when we know, you know. Have so if we, made, if we made the meeting at five thirty, the chair would not have the discretion to change it to five o'clock if necessary. That's correct. Yeah, right. okay. If you, if you actually put that, that language in the in the amendment, right. then you've got to start it at five thirty, okay. well, as opposed to saying to the chair, that the chair will make the determination and notify the notify us in due, due course. And I think, in fairness to the public, which uh, you know, we're paying a little bit more attention to. Have, that if you've got it in the bylaws as a 5.30 meeting, the chair could, the meeting could start late, but it could not start early. That would, that would be unfair to the public. Could start late, but not early. It could early. start if late. If it's in the bylaws? If, the late if it was in the bylaws. Specifically at 5.30. You could, the started. meeting could start at 6 o'clock because you didn't have a quorum, for instance. I right. Nice but, but if you had a quorum at 5 o'clock, you can't start the meeting okay. because you haven't given proper notice to the public. Well, then where's the proper notice if uh, you start at 6 if there's no quorum? The, the public is here, so then we can Well, be, it's after the public can be noticed to be here, so right. okay. it would be inconvenient for them, but, okay. uh, but still, you wouldn't have disenfranchised them. But can I suggest maybe that we ask our to address the language? Um, and sure. If that could be done within the next couple of weeks. Um, I mean, that's fine. Is there a consensus emerging though, or not? Uh, no, flexibility versus paper. Mm -hmm. I, I, I suppose you could draft it so that section could either be in or out. We can finish the discussion and go one way or the other. Um, is that legal? Well, I would present two. You would present yeah, two present different, two different, uh, right. two different alternatives. You vote one or down. And we've got to give. Mm -hmm. Ira, is it seven days notice? Notice seven days notice. So let's try to give two weeks notice to the commissioners of uh, the proposed amendments. So we're looking at two different amendments, one for a specific time and one for a I mean, unless there's, cons of the chair. Unless there's exactly. consensus. Exactly. Okay. So Ira, is, in terms of the notice, would it be sufficient to notice that there will be a change at a certain date, presumably the date, but not the actual language so that the so notice would be given that the bylaws are going to be voted on but give the board members the opportunity to discuss it and decide that night in other words i guess do i think what i would rather do is present both alternatives mm -hmm. and have the bo board vote on both mm -hmm. up, each one up or down right. so both so both hopefully both won't be adopted <laughs> 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 but both would go and the notice happens right let's say between right. the Right, right, exactly. Okay. Well, you know, it's going to take as long as we need to do. Mm -hmm. Another item. I did. Um, we had begun some um, discussion about board training. Uh, we really are at a pretty critical moment in the board. We have two new level commissioners at the same time. Uh, for the first time, I think, in a while. Very sadly, we have a chair at this moment. Um, and I would like to use my discretion as chairman to appoint a subcommittee uh, headed by 
American Hydrogropids to uh, research and look into our options as far as board training. Uh, something that can be I'm tip one. If others are interested in serving here, I, uh, I welcome your input. Any other discussion items? Uh, Mr. Smith did ask that this uh, news account yeah. be yes. included, yes. so I'm oh, not sure if it's just for information or there's a lot of information. Oh. Okay. I just did. It's face time, I guess, or maybe morning. Let's take a look at it. I have not had the opportunity to read it. To read it. Mm -hmm. it was interesting, not very far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there no other discussion items? I, guess I, have, I just have one question. I, I guess it's probably uh, better for you. With respect to the um, sex offender policy and, and our, our residents, um, I know that felonies are disqualified, you know, disqual Depends on the nature, the nature of the felony. Right. Do we have any um, misdemeanors or multiple misdemeanors that would also render them disqualified? I'll have to see. Excuse me, cumulative, such as the three, three misdemeanors, and um, the people into a felony or two, or in the nature of the misdemeanors. No. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's kind of the same that's question. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know whether or not you can reach a cumulative threshold. Mm -hmm. Three back there. Mm -hmm. My name is Lucy. Madam Chair, can I ask a question from the public? Sorry, we're not a public hearing, so we don't take questions from the public. But we continue to uh, send them in writing. So there's no provision to ask questions in no. the bylaws? No, not a public hearing. This is an open meeting for you to come and listen and sit in. So the question about my freedom of information, I have to continue to make it. How does that work? It's in your no. pocket. Right. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't hear the it. The freedom of information that I requested, I have not received an answer in 30 days. And uh, I'm sorry, who are you, sir? I'm Mark King Sanchez. Well, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Okay. Um, I, would you like me to uh, respond yes. to you? Sure. Okay. I don't know what my understanding is. Thank you. Uh, my understanding, Mr. Sanchez, unless I misread your email, it seemed to me that you were withdrawing the request and said that you would get that information independently. Did I misunderstand the email? Yes, you did. Okay. So, um, so what? So you, so that request is still standing. Absolutely. I, okay. I, don't, I, did, I think I circulated the email um, to board members, and I got the very clear impression that it was a never mind. I'll get the information yes. myself. It was not. Uh, I was still waiting for that. And, um, you suggested a format which, as you know, it's illegal. Um, so I'm still waiting for an answer. Okay. So sorry, I'll we did all get that email, which you said that I will get it from HUD directly. It didn't preclude you from providing that information. I'm oh, sorry, that was That's my understanding. Yeah, that was the way I read it. And we will certainly, if we misunderstood. We so if I went, could I get that? I'll have to go back and review the request. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Um, having evaluated the landlord tenant litigation, status of specific tenant arrears, as well as evictions that skip town in nursing homes, I move that we write off $75,156.38 of vacated tenant arrears. Make a motion. Moved and seconded then by Reverend Dawkins and the Reverend Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
motion carry. Mm -hmm. I will be adjourned. Second. All right. August meeting, Monday, August 11th.